All right, guys, thank you very much from Gainesville to College Station and Texas A&M trying to stop a four-game losing streak as they host number 18 South Carolina here tonight, one of the best road teams in the entire country. He's Damian Fishback. I'm Clay Matvick. It's a 2-0 South Carolina lead, and uh, this is a... This is a game that Texas A&M absolutely has to have as they're one of the first four out right now. Yeah, you never want to see yourself in that first four out or even last four in this time of the year. The good news for the Aggies, they have quality wins. Wins over Iowa State, Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, the Gamecocks, their future is secure, but they're competing for an SEC title. This ought to be a huge matchup here tonight, Clay. Jump shot goes down for B.J. Mack. He's got a three, and he's got the first five for South Carolina. Well, that's the difference that you see in the Gamecocks this year. They're defending much better, but the ability to stretch the four with B.J. Mack has been the difference, Clay. There you see the A&M starting five, and Hayden Hefner getting the start. The senior out of Nederland, Texas. Uh, has not been a regular in the starting lineup for the Aggies this year. Yeah, well, Buzz Williams is mixing it up tonight. Their staff, uh, they don't have suits on tonight. Uh, they're just trying to change it up. You know, on this losing streak, they realize the importance of this game. They're trying to do any and everything to get back in the win column. Here's Wade Taylor. He'll launch a three. There's a foul underneath, and it's going to go against Hefner. And that's his second already. So he gets the start, and he picks up two quick fouls. Well, I, I think the Aggies, I went to their practice yesterday, and, you know, Buzz wanted to make sure, the head coach Buzz Williams, that they were relaxed but hungry. He said, all I can do is tell my guys the truth of where they're at and what they need to do in order to get into the NCAA tournament. There's Wade Taylor. He's very hard to defend. Flips it into Radford. Levesque has it now. Guarded by Mack. What a slip there by Wildens Leveca, former Gamecock. You know he's fired up to be playing here tonight <laughs> against his old team. Absolutely. You know, he kept that pivot foot down. Levesque gives them size on the interior. Rim protection as well, Clay. South Carolina starting five. Johnson, Davis, Cooper, B.J. Mack out to a great start. And Colin Murray Boyles, terrific the last three weeks. A very explosive left hand. Yeah, and Zachary Davis gives them good length. Ability to slash like he did on that previous play, Clay, at 6'7", 6 6'8", 6 uh, and I think potentially an all-defensive league type of player in the SEC. Hefner goes baseline, well defended, and here come the Gamecocks, leading by five. And that's stolen away. Radford got in the passing lane. Radford kind of does it all, scores, rebounds, defends, and now he's fouled hard. With 17 10 to go here in the half. Well, and for a guy like Tyrese Radford, he's already dealt with injuries, right? One of the reasons why the Aggies have been up and down, and Buzz Williams is one of the best in the business. Like I said last year's SEC co coach of the year for the job that he did at Marquette, Virginia Tech, phenomenal, doing a quality job here as well. But they've had injuries. They lost Marble to begin the season, who had to step away. And they don't believe he's going to be coming back. You had Coleman that missed games. You had Solomon Washington that missed games. Boots, Radford. And so the health issues have been one of the determinants that have kept them from being consistent, Clay. They got slammed by 35 at Tennessee on Saturday. That stung. And like we said before, now they're on the outside looking in. First four out. But when we talked to Buzz this morning, he says, you know, we're taking it. One day at a time, and it sounds cliche, but it really is true. I mean, we can't win the last four unless we win the first of the four. Well, and I thought that was a terrific way to look at it, and that's the truth, right? Whatever run that you're going to try to make, it has to start with the game that you're playing on that particular day. Radford successful at the foul line, 7-4 South Carolina. Their confidence is back. A big win at Ole Miss on Saturday. That ended their first two-game losing skid of the year. This game will be decided by the strength and grit of the Gamecocks versus the speed of the Aggies. Now Davis was defended at the rim. He went in for the dunk, and I don't think it hit the rim. Well, let's take a look at it here. I don't think it hit the rim either. It looks like Zachary Davis takes it up. 
course, his hands hits the rim. What a block that time by Solo Washington. Solo Washington, quite an athlete. Louisiana Player of the Year a couple of years ago. He was one of the guys you were talking about has dealt with some nicks and, and problems this year. Had that concussion before the new year. That's right. And it's going to belong to Texas A&M. Good defense. They haven't won since beating Tennessee here 18 days ago. Said it before, Damian, this crowd is just hungry yeah. for Texas A&M to get back on track. And when this crowd gets to rock and they're one of the best in the SEC and you see the last four games, I did the game at Vanderbilt, a buzzard beater by Ezra Mignon uh, to knock them off. And then tough road loss at Alabama, who plays as well as anybody, and Arkansas swept them. And then the Tennessee game, obviously, a lot of people are going to lose at the Food City Center. Talon Cooper skips it across for Michi Johnson. And there is Murray Boyles. Only played 21 minutes at Ole Miss because of foul trouble. Still finished with 12. He has been outstanding as of late. Well, I think he's certainly going to be on the all-SEC freshman team, but a lot to choose from this year. Kentucky certainly has two of them, maybe three themselves. Jace Carter, transfer from UIC on the floor now for Texas A&M. Ball loose on the floor. And we're going to step aside with 15.40 to go here in the first half. It's a 9-4 Carolina lead. SEC Network basketball. Beat a Tennessee or beat a Kentucky by double digits and compete for an SEC championship. What a turnaround. Lost 21 games last year. Already 22 wins this season for the Gamecocks. Texas A&M needs to find the bottom of the net. They are shooting under 14%. It's a team that has struggled to make shots all year. Just over 39% on the season. Only Vanderbilt is worse in the SEC. All right, you see they're off to a rocky start. Only 12% here tonight. The key is they are excellent in going to the offensive glass. But as you said, Clay, they're going to have to make some shots to beat the likes of a top 20 team in the South Carolina Gamecocks. As the Gamecocks want to be very patient, Talon Cooper falling away. Murray Boyles underneath, but that's going to be a shot clock violation. Cooper couldn't draw iron. Yeah, excellent defense. South Carolina was on what an, such an impressive run, and then they ran into a buzzsaw at Auburn. And, you know, that was a game where they lost by 40, but they were actually in the game at points, and Auburn's like 43 and I think maybe three over the last three seasons there. So it's a tough team to beat in Neville Arena. But they bounce back with a quality win and have their confidence win. Well, Bradford got that one to go. Guy who came back for his sixth year, averages 15 per game. That's his first field goal. And inside, Jacoby Wright can't finish. Now, even though that was a layup, Clay, that plays into the hands of the Aggies. They want this game to be more about speed and skill versus South Carolina wants to slow it down, be able to run a half-court offense, and then get out and push it when they want to. Now that foul on Colin Murray boils his first. He had three fouls in the first eight minutes at Ole Miss, and Lamont Paris is going to put him on the bench. I, I think maybe he's thinking we can't afford to get him in foul trouble two games in a row. Well, we saw Walter Clayton Jr. go out with, what, 14 minutes to play in the Florida game, right. so he's wanting to save him right now. Here's Wade Taylor. Wade Taylor, 500 points, 100 assists for the second straight year. Texas A&M, Damian, they're, they're at their best when they get inside, and they're struggling to do that. Sure. I don't know why. That time, Wade Taylor the fourth didn't go at B.J. Mack. He had the mismatch. He's got to try to take advantage of that as a guard and put the Gamecocks at a disadvantage. B.J. Mack leading the Gamecocks with five as Stephen Clark is in the game, the Citadel transfer. Here's Mack again, working Carter. Skips it out. Carter for three. He's got a lot of confidence tonight. Didn't get it that time. Texas A&M in transition. Here's Solo Washington. 
going in for the slam, and he's hammered. But one thing that I noticed here extremely early, and we talked to Coach Buzz Williams about this at the shoot-around. They're playing faster. And I asked Buzz, I said, because you guys are a little undersized, but you're, you're leaner and you're more athletic, how do you balance trying to continue to be a good defensive team with getting out and running? And he said it's extremely hard because if we take a quick shot when – our guys aren't expecting it, then that hurts our offensive rebound because they're not in a position to go to the glass, and it also hurts us in getting back in defensive transition. But when we have the opportunity, especially in this game, we want to use our speed and our quickness to get out and score before the defense is set up. Well, Solo Washington, a 69% foul shooter, misses the first one. Well, you mentioned earlier that Washington was one of the more athletic players on the Aggies team. I would say he's one of the more athletic players in the SEC. I think he's going to be a high-level player in this conference as his skill catches up to his energy and his motor. Well, they're going to steal a possession here after the two missed foul shots. Here's Solo with five to shoot. Working on Cooper, falling away, and it rattles home. How about that shot well, by Solo Washington? His touch is much better uh, than it looks. I think he's a very emotional guy, and he, he's extremely lean, right? We talked about that a little bit earlier, but his athleticism and his energy is through the roof. Michi Johnson was wide, wide open in the corner, but... South Carolina will do. They bring it out to set up. They're one of the slowest offenses in the country. And that's a nice reverse inside for Stephen Clark, his first two. Well, you're talking about a guy in Stephen Clark that's an 1,000 point score, transfer from the Citadel. He actually averaged 16 and 7 his senior year. Well, Basaki, they're going to say it was a foul on the floor, so no basket for Manny Obasaki. Clay, let's keep our eye on this, though, Clay. We talked about it. Look how much quicker the Aggies are playing. And I think, you know, sometimes because Boots Radford, uh, along with Wade Taylor IV, they play a lot of minutes, 30-plus minutes a game. Sometimes they conserve their energy. Coming down the stretch here trying to get into the tournament, they cannot afford to do that. Well, South Carolina already with five team fouls. And Buzz Williams said that, you know, first one getting to the bonus is going to have a real advantage as Obasaki knocks it down. Manny Obasaki, Manny Obasaki, one of the highest recruits to ever come through Texas A&M, now beginning to play with a little bit more confidence. Little spark off the bench. And now Texas A&M is within one. Just over 12 minutes to go first half. Talon Cooper, the veteran point guard. Big addition out of the transfer portal this year for Carolina. Johnson oh. rattles home a long three for the Gamecocks. Yeah, that's what makes the Gamecocks a dangerous team when Michi Johnson is on. He smells trouble. 20-plus points on seven occasions this season. Solo Johnson just gliding in, showing that aforementioned athleticism again. How you like the pace of this game, partner? It's breakneck, right? <laughs> And G. Johnson kind of been in an offensive funk coming into this game. Let's see if he can string two baskets in a row together. He's going to draw the contact. That's a Texas A&M foul on Washington. So with 11-21 to go here at Reed, it's a two-point ball game. E.G. Johnson, he's a pretty good drummer. Preseason uh, SEC media days and there was a chip on his shoulder, you know, there was a certain quiet confidence that he had about his basketball team and you saw all of the things that they've done, they hadn't done it since, like you said, 96-97 when Eddie Fogel was there, did a phenomenal job but how he has changed the mindset of this team and the success that they have had, I think is comparable to any team in college basketball success or is not comparable because of the job that he's done Five points for number five, Michi Johnson, in his second year at South Carolina after two at Ohio State. And it's a four-point lead for the Gamecocks. The defense for South Carolina, very sharp at Ole Miss, held the Rebels to a season-low 59 points, and they are really doing a good job on AM so far. And now foul on B.J. Mack. 
And that's his second. But, you know, when we talk to Lamont today, Fish, I mean, he just talks about defense almost more than anything else. He prides himself on having a great defensive team. Well, and today, obviously, they're holding the Aggies to 38%, Clay. But, but the big difference uh, in this season is the way that they're defending people, right? You think about their scoring defense being so much better than it was last year. And let's be candid. Last year, Gigi Jackson, a highly touted recruit, going to be a nice NBA player, but it's harder to build your team around one freshman like that. He said, I'm going to go out. I'm going to get older. I'm going to get skilled guys that play the game the way I want to play the game. And that has led to his success this season. Anderson Garcia with a couple of baskets at the free throw line. His first points. Terrific rebounder, of course. He leads the SEC. Number two in the nation in offensive rebounds per game. This is the number three rebounding team in the country, Texas A&M. Florida, who we just saw earlier, leading the nation in that category. Johnson misses from three, tapped out. And now Jace Carter wants to run for the Aggies. Yeah, I like the zone right now by the Aggies. What it's doing is it's it's making the Gamecocks one-dimensional. They like to get their bigs inside. They like to cut and slash to the basket. But right now they're settling more from the perimeter. And it's poked out of bounds by Ugasek, the freshman from Helsinki. Morris Ugasek. Last NCAA trip for South Carolina was the final four year, 2017. Senate before, projected to be a sixth seed right now, trying to pad their resume on the road here tonight. Four to shoot, and that's slapped away, and Ugasek is going to pick up the foul. Yeah, you remember when Frank Martin made that impressive run, Sandarius Thornwell uh, was obviously a, a huge piece. P.J. Dozier, nice freshman that came in, and, and I thought that was the change in the SEC because at that time, Coach Cal really was holding the torch for the SEC. Uh, and I remember when the SEC only had three teams not long before that. Then you had Frank Martin make that run. Mike yeah. White, who's now at Georgia, was included in that run as well. They actually played each other, I believe, in the Elite Eight game. So that's when you started to have people outside of the SEC saying, the SEC is more than Kentucky. And obviously this season, that's went to an entirely different level with now five, six teams that are consistently in the top 25. That foul was actually called on Johnson. Bradford hits them both, and we're tied up. As you see it right now, how many teams do you see getting in from the SEC? Well, Joe Lenardi's got seven. I think that you will have a team like Texas A&M or Ole Miss. One of those two teams make a run. They're, you know, but they're both certainly good enough. But the Aggies, with their wins over Iowa State, Kentucky, and Tennessee, I would say have the best chance. And you see the seeding right now. All of those teams that are listed, uh, obviously, I don't think are only going to get to the NCAA tournament, but I think they will advance. The Aggies have to get in there now. Mitchie Johnson with a couple of threes here in the half. The lead is three. That swims off the rim. Jacoby Wright will try a three. Nothing but net. I told Lamont Paris I thought he was the biggest example of the coaching job that he had done. Jacoby Wright wasn't a confident player. He started to pick up steam last year, but hit a last-second shot this season against Missouri and plays like he knows that he's supposed to be on the floor now. Key man off the bench, Jacoby Wright. Scored 10 at Ole Miss on Saturday. He's got it again. He'll try another three. Backside rebound, Boots Radford. He'll wait for reinforcements. And now Taylor is bucked. And see, I think the Aggies have to do more of that. Again, Tyrese Boots Radford was the only one out running the floor. Now give credit for the Gamecocks getting back in deep defensive transition. But if you're smaller and you're undersized, which they are, in their backcourt. You've got to get out, use your speed, and try to get to the rim before all five defenders are set up. Wade Taylor, last four games below his average. Same with Tyrese Radford. So during the losing streak, two guys that they have been counting on all year just haven't quite had the spark. 
Hoping that changes tonight. Well, especially the last four games, right? And we talked about Wade Taylor the fourth preseason SEC player of the year. Tyrese Boots Radford, an all-league preseason player as well. They have to carry this team because their play not only helps their team, but it helps take the pressure off guys like Henry Coleman, Garcia, Levesque, and Jace Carter. South Carolina still in the hunt for an SEC regular season title. But a top four finish is the more immediate goal. The top four get a two-game bye in Nashville. And now AM is going to get it back. Yeah, I like the pressure that time by Wade Taylor the fourth using his speed and his strength in order to try to make Michi Johnson uncomfortable. Try to get this tempo going up and down a little bit more. Well, it's three and a half minutes since Texas A&M hit its last field goal. They've been getting to the line. They got into the bonus early in the half. There's Taylor. Nice move. He'll kick it out. Radford. Line drive. Doesn't go. And just one and done for A&M. Murray Boyles is fouled. And that's on the look back. Well, you might notice that Mr. Three-Piece Suit is in different attire tonight. State, two games behind Houston, trying to compete for a Big 12 title. So they have proven that they can beat anybody. Unfortunately, they've also proven they can lose to anybody as well. Yeah, still in the uh, NCAA tournament conversation because of those five quad one wins. A jump shot doesn't go for Cooper. Foul. Oh, there we South go once Carolina. again. But but you notice those are just like body blows in boxing. Anytime you can get out, what Buzz Williams said he wants to do, they want to get to the free throw line more than South Carolina tonight. They want to win the offensive glass tonight. Uh, and, and that's what they're trying to do here early. I think the faster they play, the better they can do that because they're quicker and faster, but they're certainly not bigger and stronger than the game cops. Wade Taylor. Slow starter in this game. He doesn't have a field goal yet. He's 0 for 3 from the field, but hitting foul shots here. Taylor can get hot, though, for sure. He scored 41 at Arkansas this year. Most points for an Aggie in 39 years. You notice the pointy. They're blitzing ball screens right now. Trying to force South Carolina to speed up. Gray with a beautiful pass to Zachary Davis on the baseline. Davis coming off his best game of the year. He had 14 and 9 at Ole Miss, both career highs. And South Carolina, nine baskets made now, nine assists. Yeah, beautiful job. And right now, the Aggies again trying to see if they can force South Carolina to play a little bit faster. Trying to speed them up, which is very difficult to do for a Lamont Paris team. Johnson going to work, and he's going to be fouled going up. Two shots coming. Well, so often when you see a blitzing of the screen, you see here, now, it's man on man. And then watch the blitz. But Michi Johnson, he doesn't panic. And when he doesn't panic, that puts the Aggies at a disadvantage. And you're right, Josh Gray with the proper assist and nice pass to Zachary Davis. That's how you handle when there's a blitz or a trap on the ball screen. First foul on Anderson Garcia. Johnson at the line. We talked about Johnson struggling a bit in SEC play, especially over the last eight games or so. But, I mean, this guy can bring energy. And no doubt a leader for this Gamecocks team. Absolutely. You think about when he put up those 29 points over Notre Dame in the ACC-SEC Challenge. Uh, back in late November. I mean, this guy is one of multiple guys, though, on South Carolina team that's had 20-point games. Texas A&M has gone over five minutes without a basket. And that's knocked out of bounds. We'll stay on this end with 14 to shoot. Texas A&M uh, 
very fortunate to get into the bonus so early. They've been able to stay in this game at the foul line, but it's just another game where they're not shooting it well from the field. They were 18 of 66 in that loss at Tennessee. Tennessee forced them into a ton of jump shots. Well, you're talking about two teams that are really good in, in, in defense in Tennessee, right? Tops in the country uh, and defensive efficiency in the game. Cox as well. Gray swats that one out of bounds. Tend to shoot here. Gray is quite a specimen. I mean, he's seven feet tall, 265 pounds. I tell you what, he's really been locked in the last few weeks for South Carolina. Radford got his own miss, tipped it up and in. Yeah, nice battle. And you talked about the struggles that the Aggies have had. Reed Arena, though, keeping them involved in this basketball game. The energy and effort has been there. Garcia comes away with it for the Aggies. Down five. Taylor, short, but he's going to the line. And Lamont Paris on the sideline, flustered right now because of the Aggies continuing to get to the charity stripe, telling his guys, just keep your hands out. Lamont Paris, in his last year at Chattanooga, he had the most road wins in the country and I you know I asked him point blank today fish you know what's your secret and he says wait well first of all we just don't change anything when we go sure. on the road and I, I kind of joke I mean easier said than done but he has found the right mix of whatever it is to get wins on the road well and you see the job that he's done this year obviously at Alabama we talked about tough but at Tennessee is as good as win as you'll find in all of college basketball this season and the other wins quality wins as well any win in the SEC on the road is a tough one I think it was the first loss that Ole Miss had at home this season as well from a hungry rebel team five and a half to go first half shot clock at five Jacoby Wright penetrates the bounds stay with South Carolina but they've just had three seconds to work with here on the shot clock Maybe Talon Cooper to trigger it in transfer from Minnesota and they're going to run out of time and that's a shot clock violation second one and Texas A&M is forced here in the half I think Reed Arena appreciates, appreciates the defense. Now, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that Miles Studi, the transfer from Vanderbilt, is out of this basketball game tonight. They're actually 13-0 and 0 when he actually scores 10-plus points. He hurt his knee uh, earlier last week. Well, Basaki, nice move around Davis, but Davis stood his ground and then plucks the rebound. Yeah, the Gamecocks do a fantastic job of simply keeping the basketball in front of them. They stay chest to chest. Well, my Paris really loves Zach Davis's defense. Says he has such a bright future. Cooper back on the perimeter. Dibba attacks, and he got it. Chance at a three-point play for Dibba. Well, I give a lot of credit to the way the ball moved. You see how it was popping? It went from side to side. Because the ball did not stick, because it popped, that it didn't give the Texas A&M Aggies time for them to rotate and get in a defensive position. Because of the quickness and the way the ball moved, that caused Tyrese Radford to get a block instead of a charge on that play. Dibba in his second game of the year for South Carolina. Well, he actually played for my former coach, Coach Cliff Ellis, who retired this year at Coastal Carolina, who's one of the SEC legends. SEC tournament coming up in Nashville. Tore his Achilles. Good to see him back out playing and healthy again. Leading's five for the Gamecocks. Nice. Garcia, what an adjustment mid-air to get it to go.
Cooper in the paint. Jacoby Wright getting late in the shot clock again. Dibba for three. And a foul underneath. That's going to be on Taylor, I believe. Wade Taylor picking up the foul with 3.56 to go in the half. South Carolina. They have that game and they don't have a deep pitch at this time. They're going to struggle. At the same time, Texas A&M has had guys in and out of the lineup this entire season, which is one of the reasons why they haven't had the success that a lot of people have expected. That's not just missed games. That's mixed practices as well. But you got to give South Carolina and the Gamecocks all the credit in the world. They now go to a 1-3-1 zone to see if they can change it up a little bit for the Aggies. Oh, almost stolen away there by Davis. Out of bounds to a &M, which has had a tough night shooting again. They're two for their last ten, and they have yet to hit a three tonight, Fish. They're 0 for 6 out of the gate from outside the arc. Uh, South Carolina's been really good defensively all year. Uh, they held the Ole Miss Rebels to 33% from the field. Hefner back in the game. He launches a three. Garcia, one of the best rebounders in the nation. Here's Solo Washington again. And Cooper will clear it for the Gamecocks. Yeah, just not working as a cohesive unit. We talked about how the ball was moving quickly with the Gamecocks. It's sticking a little bit right now for the Aggies. Davis attacks and got the bounce. Nice. Really love his size, his length, his athleticism. He is a defender, but he's a guy that they can really build on. The sophomore, six foot seven, 194 pounds. Bradford and Texas A&M still cold from outside the arc. Going back to Zachary Davis fish. This is his 12th straight start. Since he's been a regular in the starting lineup, things have really gone well for the Gamecocks. Sure. Cooper. Murray Boyles. You know, he's hard to stop when he gets downhill. The big 6'7", 231-pound freshman. Yeah, breakout game with those 31 points versus Texas Vanderbilt on February the 10th. And that week he was actually named SEC Freshman of the Week, and it was well-deserved. And I think we manufacture some more points. They've got to the free throw line. They're doing pretty good on the offensive glass. They're winning that 8-2. For six second chance points, but this 1 3 1 zone has slowed them down. They don't need to settle, they need to get to the rim. There you go. Coleman off a nice little dish across the lane from Garcia. First basket for Henry Coleman. Michi Johnson leading the Gamecocks with 10 points. He's on the bench right now. Zach Davis has six. He's got it here on the wing. His three is short. Garcia, another rip off the rim. And Taylor floats it up and in, and we need to see more of that from him. Is that's what, what Buzz Williams is thinking. Well, and that's what I'm talking about when I say they have to play faster. You cannot walk the ball up in the SEC. This is a defensive lead, even though you've got teams that are top five in scoring like Alabama and Kentucky. You've got to get out and go offensively before the length and athleticism sets up defensively. That's the first basket for Taylor in this game. Now a turnover. They can tie with a three. See, I don't like that shot. You're trying to slow up, get a foul. No, go to the basket and score before that defense is set up. Use your quickness and your speed if you're Wade Taylor to get at point-blank range because you're struggling 0 of 9 as a team from the three-point line. Another turnover. Garcia takes it away. 48 seconds to go in the half. And the Gamecocks, they love this pace. They can get back in their 1-3-1 zone. They are big on the interior. Coleman on the baseline, muscled it up, can't finish. That's what happens when you wait and let the defense get back. Too big, too strong. Nice job defensively by South Carolina. A three-second difference between game and shot clock. Josh Gray at 7 feet, 265 pounds. 
You got to make that big fella get out and run. And Milkovich clocked down. Jacoby Wright takes it to the top of the key. Wright, one on the shot clock. They better hurry. That's another shot clock violation, I believe. Yeah, it is. That is the third forced by the Aggies' defense here in the first half, Fish. Well, and a shot clock violation, it looks like, before the offensive foul. Yeah. So that's going to be a break, actually, for Zachary Davis and the Gamecocks. 2.4 seconds. Look for Wade Taylor to try to get this on the run or Tyrese Boots Rashford and get it up quick. That would have been the third foul against Davis, but it's wiped out. Yeah, huge break for the Gamecocks. 2.4 to work with here for the Aggies. They've got to take up the length of the court. And Hayden Hefner inserted in the basketball game. They like to try to get him on the sideline, potentially, for a three-point shot. Buzz now gathering his guys together. This would be a huge momentum swing, as horrible as the Aggies have played offensively, to be only down three to potentially tie this. Hefner, three-point specialist, but two of his last 11 from three. Radford will do the honors, and he missed it. 32-29, number 18, South Carolina has led from the outset. We're going to send it to the studio. Peter and company. Guys, take it away. Bruce Radford, again, trying to get downhill. That's what these two players do. That's what they'll need to do to win in the second half. Yeah, Texas A&M is going to need more from Taylor and Radford. Combined 3 of 14 shooting. They are 0 for 8 from 3 combined. And as a team, A&M 0 for 10 from outside the arc. Nice reverse going to the other side of the 10. Davis for South Carolina. Well, that's what would concern me if I'm having to face the Gamecocks as this season goes on. A lot of teams don't get better as the season goes on. These Gamecocks are continuing to improve every time they step in between the lines. Nice cut. But Garcia can't finish with the left hand. Mad that he, he, he made that much harder than it had to be. He should have just went directly to the rim. There's not huge rim protection on either one of these teams. Attack the glass and dunk it. Now Michi Johnson picking up where he left off in the first half. Nice mid-range jump shot. He's got a dozen. Yeah, absolutely love his basketball game. When he simplifies it, straight line drive or jump shot or just a nice mid-range or step back, he's really good. This matches South Carolina's biggest lead. It's seven. And Radford throws it up a little wildly. Cooper into the front court. Finds a seam and then passes back for Davis for the two-hand slam. If I'm Buzz, I'm getting a timeout. You don't want to get behind against a team like the Gamecocks, and it looks like that's exactly what he's doing. They're like the Virginias, the Wisconsins of old. You've just got to do much better. Give credit to the top 20 team who may be better than their top 20 Rakers. Their sixth SEC road win. They're well on their way. Yeah, oh, give credit. You know, he's... He's at a school with Don Staley, who's one of the best to ever do it in college basketball, competing for her third uh, college basketball championship this year. I like them to do it again. I think they did it in 17 and 2022. But but right now, there's been a huge sense of confidence because of what they've already accomplished. And that's what Lamont Paris told us today. He said, after the Auburn and LSU loss, he said, I talked to the guys about what you've already completed, and that's something that helped them continue to gain their confidence to get it back. Wade Taylor with his first points of the second half. He had seven at the break. Like the timeout in response by the Aggies getting Wade Taylor downhill and attacking the basket. South Carolina 13 assists on 15 field goals. And that wow. three goes down for Michi Johnson. That's his third triple of the game. You know, that was a well-defended play, but that's just how good South Carolina can be. They were going for the duck in with Colin Murray Boyles. They double-teamed it, but on the closeout, Michi Johnson just knocked it down. Offensive foul on the Aggies. Anderson Garcia with the illegal screen. Clay, this is what I'm talking about. See, there's a nice duck in. There's a good double team by Hayden Hefter and Garcia, but look at the closeout. He just wasn't far enough 
with Michi Johnson, you got to approach him like a Steph Curry. He's got that type of range, so your closeouts have to be longer. Solo Washington back on the floor. So is Jace Carter, the junior, transferred in from University of Illinois at Chicago. Baseline, Cooper at it stripped going up. And the bounce, and it'll stay with South Carolina with nine on the shot clock. Johnson with 15, Davis now with 10. These are the only players in this game in double figures. And that's an offensive foul on the Gamecocks. That's Colin Murray Boyle's third personal foul. Lamont Paris having a conversation with veteran official Terry Oglesby, just continuing to advocate for his team a little bit, Clay. Just stand in the ear of the officials. Let them know you're there. Radford lets everybody in Reed Arena know he's here. Knocks down a mid-range shot. We talked about this off the air, Clay. And, yes, AM stayed in the game in the first half because of their ability to get to the free throw line. I think the Aggies overdo it sometime, attempting to get to the line versus focusing on making the shot. That's what they need to do here in the second half. Nice left hand and finish by Talon Cooper. Wow. You're talking about a guy that's got over 1,340 career points. You can't speed him up, and he's always playing at his own pace. And then Cooper swats that one away from Taylor. In transition, three ball doesn't go for Davis. And Washington will get the carom. Talon Cooper you know, brings a lot of leadership to the table for South Carolina. Wants to get into coaching someday. As Mack gets the rebound here for the Gamecocks. See, I just think this is too slow for the Aggies. You know, this is the pace. You see how the Gamecocks walk it up? This is what they want. Slowest tempo, slowest pace in the SEC. They're really good at half-court execu execution, getting mismatches. They're looking for B.J. Mack on the block right here. Murray Boyles from the free throw line. Doesn't go. And it's belonged to Texas A&M. But South Carolina has opened up a 10-point lead here on the road. When we come back, it's Damien's Fish Fact. Watch me. Talking about how the net rankings work, right? But at the end of the day, you're going to be able to determine that as the season goes on. The Big 12 right now, they've got the most bids. Let's see how people continue to succeed in postseason. The last few years, UConn, Baylor, Kansas. The SEC will have every chance to prove that it is the best conference, along with the other leagues in all of college basketball. Clay, time will either promote you or will expose you. That's fish fact for tonight. Happy you, birthday. Thank you, sir. That was very kind. Looks good, too. Michi Johnson long three and a wild miss. I just opened it up. It was from my favorite producer, Alyssa. Thank you for the card. Alyssa Killebrew. You always She's very look thoughtful. The, very thoughtful. Boots Radford. See if he can heat up here in the second half. The lefty, and he misses badly. So each team with an air ball on their last possession. Well, in that time, will promote you or expose you. He's going to work for this Texas A&M Aggies as well. The, the good news for them is that South Carolina, who was projected 14th in the SEC preseason, is a top 25 team. Yeah. The bad news is that South Carolina is a top 25 team. It's an opportunity, but it's against a quality team. Inside to Gray, bobbles it, flips it out. Cooper steps inside the three-point line, halfway down, and it comes out. Radford leading a three-on-two break. Taylor had it poked away, and they're going to call a foul here on South Carolina. It's on Johnson. And I think that's his third. Yes, it is. So as much as the Aggies have struggled tonight, they only have three turnovers, and that's what's kept them in the basketball game. But they are 0 for 12. That's right, a donut from behind the three-point line, which is the reason why they've been struggling.
Cooper for three. Yes. Pretty. Boy, that was a sweet-looking shot. And that's why I say that for the Aggies, they have to play faster. That was Wade Taylor against a 6'8 Zachary Davis. So whenever you see the Aggies help, that's putting them at a disadvantage and in closeout positions that the Gamecocks have taken advantage of. Radford knocks down a two on the other end. Radford now with a dozen. He's the first Aggie into double figures tonight. That's something that you see at the next, at the NCAA, is you have better teams that take advantage of the switches that you see in college basketball. Davis leans in. The double team affected his shot. And there's a foul call. That's Josh Gray picking up his first in the fourth on South Carolina. Clay, this is what I'm talking about, right? See, Zachary Davis there, that's six, seven, six, eight against six feet. So there was help, and then you had a lackadaisical closeout by, you know, Tyrese Radford, and Talon Cooper is going to knock that down every single time. And so that's the challenge that you're dealing with in the half court for the Aggies. Davis floats it up and in. Much better. Like that speed off of the bounce. Just quicker to the basketball. Taylor, I should say, with 11 now. So he's in double figures after a slow start. Diva getting some playing time. First game since game one of the year. Battled an Achilles injury. Ibrahima Dibba. Taylor drops it inside for Solo Washington. Backing down Dibba. And again, they can't finish at the rim. And it's out of bounds to South Carolina. You touched on this, Fish. I mean, just the Aggies just not finishing at the rim well that's because I, I think that they're undersized for the most part and so if if i go against shaquille o'neal all day trying to go inside to the basket in a half court setting i'm going to lose but i'm going to make that big fella get up and down the floor and over time i'm hoping that my endurance uh, is going to win in a 40-minute basketball game i think that's what the aggies have to do they have to try to turn south carolina over speed them up without taking too many risks because in the half court they are dangerous davis thought about a long three steps in for a closer look from three rebound to the aggies but you see here wade taylor slowing it up and now you've got that good size of, of south carolina set going chest to chest defensively and that time they do finish with Garcia on a pretty pass from Obasaki. Well, that's what Pat Bradley was talking about. Continuing to go downhill. So two things that they've done that they talked about in the studio, getting downhill and then Slay talked about Wade Taylor getting involved, which is going to enhance the ability of the other players to be successful for the Aggies. Aggies on a 6-0 run now. Talon Cooper, beautiful pass. Davis. How is there no foul in there? Good defense by Texas A&M as they've got the momentum right now. Yeah, the Gamecocks are wondering the same thing, but on the other end, Manny Obaski, nice spin. And then look at Mr. Garcia with the finish. He won't lose the rest of these games. We won't get into That's the tournament. Right. The only thing we can control is to try to beat South Carolina. On the other side, what about South Carolina? Yeah, you were projected 14th by preseason SEC, but you're competing for an SEC championship and seeding to not only get into the tournament, but try to get a good seed so that you can advance once you get there. The Aggies still in the hunt for an SEC title. As B.J. Mack is called for the foul, and he's got three now. Michi Johnson also with three, and Murray Boyles has three for the Gamecocks. All part of that recipe that 
Coach Buzz Williams was telling us about trying to get to the free throw line, win the offensive glass. It's a 15 foul on the Gamecocks. Bradford. Nice stick back on the backside by Washington. Yeah, big time rebound by Washington. A missed box out that time. Something that you don't often see by the Gamecocks, who are actually only down one on the glass. Just one look for the Gamecocks on that trip as Johnson misses the shot. 8 0 run for AM. Carter is fouled. Going up. And it's the fourth on Colin Murray Boyles. Kevin Love said one of the ways that he was able to go in offensive rebound was anticipating the miss. That time, Colin Murray Boyles just focused the freshman on the on the ball, but he didn't put a body on Solomon Washington, which is the reason why he was able to get to that glass. So Jace Carter will go to the foul line. AM is 11 of 14 at the stripe tonight. And he'll get the bounce. AM and 9 and 4 at home this year. They lost their last home game to Arkansas. That was a real blow to this team's resume. Sure. And they can they can bounce back with a beautiful win here tonight against the number 18 team in the country. And they're starting to come back now. It's a 9-0 run. As you look at Carter's numbers. Yeah, the he's first eight games in SEC play in the last six. Well, he's really continued to improve. The problem is that Boots, Rafford, and Wade Taylor numbers have went down over the past four games. But Jace Carter's proven that he could be that third scorer that they need along with Henry Coleman. Here comes the crowd at Reed over 9,200 here tonight as Mack is fouled. Sanderson Garcia's third foul. B.J. Mack has been in this arena before and, and won here. Actually, when he was playing for Walford, had double figures and about four rebounds when they were able to come in here and beat the Texas A&M Aggies. He's played 85 games with 69 starts in three seasons at Walford where he averaged 16 and 6 his last season. He came out tonight stroking it. I mean, he did hit his first two baskets early in the first half. That last free throw shot his first point since those five early. And that's kicked out of bounds. It's going to go to Texas A&M with 10.04 on the clock as Texas A&M has made this interesting. They have trailed from the outset. Well, what you don't want if you're the Gamecocks is to continue to allow the Aggies to hang around here. On the road, you want to try to close that door. Give credit to Texas A&M for battling in spite of the struggles from the perimeter. Obasaki just snaking his way to the hoop. He got it to go. Carolina led by as many as 13 here in the second half. Mack. And guess who? Anderson Garcia with a rebound. Yeah, Reed Arena really getting into it a little bit. If they can get a basket here, this crowd would explode. Manny Obaski, the guy hunting to do it. And he's going to go to the line for the one and one. We're going to check with his first foul, and Texas AM again gets into the bonus fairly early in the half. 9.08 to go. Well, you think about Manny Obaski. As a sophomore, he actually was second in the SEC amongst bench players uh, in averaging about 5.2 points per game. And that was amongst bench players who played 15 minutes per game or less than 15 minutes per game. Had plenty of experience, saw game in, or saw action in 20 games. He's a guy, though, that I know Coach Buzz Williams is looking for more from. We talked about it in the first half, one of the highest recruits to come through Texas A&M. 
And when you have a team that's scoring and you have a talent like Manny Obaski, it is much needed on this team. AM has come all the way back to tie it up here in the second half. A 13 point Gamecocks lead has disappeared. Michi Johnson, deep three. And South Carolina 0 for its last seven. Washington, yes! And for the first time tonight, AM leads. And Lamont Paris needs a timeout. Texas Saints is one. All it takes is a spark, and they have one. But I like the timeout call by Coach Lamont Paris. Let's see how they respond. Uh, the Aggies right now in a 2-2-1, probably going back to man-to-man. -to -man. They're doing a nice job of communicating, pointing, switching. I look for this basketball to end up in the hands of Cooper or Michi Johnson. Michi Johnson, you're Strong. right. He got it and won. And that will... Pump the brakes on a Texas A&M 17 to one run. Love it when Mark Jackson used to say, "Mama, there goes that man," and his name is Michi Johnson. Silences the crowd of Reed Arena, absorbs the contact, gets into the body of Solomon Washington, but keeps his eyes focused on the glass to convert. But he can't hit the free throw. Michi Johnson, 17 points on 5 of 9 shooting. Here's Carter from the corner. And Cooper will track down the backside rebound for the Gamecocks. And Johnson has fouled out high. And that's not Carter. Oftentimes in the game of basketball, and you see this a lot in tournaments as well. A team has to fight so hard to get back on top that they exert a lot of energy where they can't sustain it. The good news is this isn't a tournament atmosphere. This isn't a neutral site. This is at home in Reed Arena for the Aggies. Let's see if the fans can keep them energetic. Cooper Woo. got the three. Tough. That's his second triple of the half. And just like that, the number 18 team in the country gets back in front. And Wade Taylor misses the three. There's a foul on South Carolina underneath. Gamecock shooting about 34% uh, in SEC play from behind the three-point line. They're about right where they should be at 39%. But the Aggies, even though they're last in the SEC, their percentage is just struggling so much. What a good look. Not a bad closeout by Solomon Washington, but just a good look and good conversion by Talon Cooper. Talon Cooper with eight points, all of them here in the second half for the Gamecocks. As Carter will get the bonus. It's one and one. Bradford back on the floor for AM. Obasiki will sit down. Murray Boyle's back on the floor for the Gamecocks. He's playing with four fouls for South Carolina. Well, he's got to be aggressive and intelligent at the same time. If you're going to get that fifth foul, you want to get it at the right way. You don't want to be going over the back. You don't want a careless blocking charge or reaching call. You want to earn it. And you want to make sure that you're cognizant about your value being in this basketball game as a freshman the first time in Reed Arena. Davis skips it across. Cooper, shot fake. Extra pass. Underneath, Gray can't finish, but there is Murray Boyles to flush it down. CMB back in the building once again. Didn't take him long for his presence to be felt on the offensive glass. Well, that's being aggressive. While still being smart, for yep. sure. Bradford, yes! Second three of the night for AM. And then there were two. The Gamecocks went to that 1 3 1 zone. Dangerous right now as the Aggies continue to gain a little bit of momentum and confidence. Tipped out. Gray keeps it alive for the Gamecocks. Wide open is Michi Johnson, but he missed it badly. 
Garcia and the crowd's going to let him hear it. Well, Garcia took a shot from Michi Johnson on that play. That shows you how to be an aggressive offensive player. Michi Johnson has good size at the guard. He's 6'2", but he's 185 pounds. He's solid, and he's asking for the call, but he initiated that contact. And I'm going to tell you what. Garcia took the, the biggest blow, and he's on the sideline. They're taking a look at him. He took a shot to the mouth. Henry Coleman back on the floor for the Aggies. He's played just 10 minutes tonight. Radford, nice adjustment to get that in around Murray Boyce. But Clay, he wasn't going for the foul on that time. He was focusing on making the shot. That's the difference. The lead is three now for AM. Wide open, Cooper. He gets another one. Pretty basketball. That's how you win games on the road. There was no sense of panic by Michi Johnson or the freshman who got it in the middle of the paint. He is three for three from three-point land. 11 points for Cooper. And fouled underneath. It's going to go against South Carolina. on Josh Gray, his second. And it looks like Taylor's going to be all right, but he took a hard hit. And, Clay, this is what I mean. You see how they were able to draw two? You've seen the Aggies in closeouts, and at times they overhelp. And South Carolina has done a nice job of keeping that ball moving so when the Aggies overhelp or get two on the basketball, it puts them at a disadvantage to where they have longer closeouts. Well, Taylor will go to the line in a tie game. It has not been vintage Wade Taylor tonight. 0 for 6 from 3, 3 of 11 from the field, but he's 6 of 7 at the line. He's getting to the line. He's making his foul shots. Sure. Got them both. Wow. 19 of 22. From the free throw line for the Aggies. And we said it a couple of times already tonight. Buzz Williams said that was going to be key. Get to the bonus early in both halves. They have done that. They've stayed in this game. In fact, they've come back to take the lead after being down 13 in the half. In large part because of their shooting at the strike. Five to shoot. Cooper wide open for three again. Off the heel. Backside. Murray Boyles keeps it alive. Boy, he's a freshman, but that was a grown man rebound. The rookie working hard. Got it, Murray Boyles. Wow. Lamont Paris told us that he was really their best player over the summer before he got mono and had to work his way back. And a quick shot. And Wade Taylor. Now South Carolina can take the lead back with four and a half to go. B.J. Mack looking for help. Michi Johnson dials up a three. Tipped up and in. Zachary Davis, big basket. Bigger, stronger, longer at every position right now is South Carolina. And Zachary Davis has followed up a career-high 14 against Ole Miss with another nice game tonight. He's got a dozen. That time Taylor was looking for the foul again. Good no call. I'm surprised that the Aggies have not went at Colin Murray Boyles. He's got four fouls. Put the pressure on him to defend without fouling. And now the Gamecocks are going to take a measured pace here. Talon Cooper. No. Murray Boyles with a fresh shot clock. Mack can't hit from three. Garcia will track it down. Both teams have two timeouts. What a possession game right now before our last media timeout coming up. Huge play right here. Radford has his pocket picked. Johnson in free flight. And he'll lay it up and in. And we've got a timeout with 3.11 to go. 63-59, South Carolina. Right now, South Carolina projected to be a sixth seed in the tournament. Right. 
Michi's baskets have just been such timely baskets tonight. Let's see what Coach Williams comes up with out of the timeout now. Bradford, jumper doesn't go. Johnson climbs the ladder for the rebound. Solid. South Carolina is going to force you to make shots. They're going to stay in front of the basketball and stay in front of you chest to chest. Watch your waist and make you play over the top of them. Johnson going to work again. Got it and foul. SEC championship type basketball. We mentioned their success on the road. We talked about the job that Coach Lamont Paris did on the road at Chattanooga, the turnarounds. When you allow Michi Johnson to straight line drive, he is more athletic than he looks on this television at home, I promise you. The size of his legs, he's explosive, he's strong, and has the ability to finish in traffic. A three-point play, and just like that, it's back to an eight-point lead. Actually, seven-point lead, pardon me. So, Abasaki comes back in for Texas A&M. Hefner will sit down. South Carolina sitting on nine turnovers for almost all of this half. And Obasaki is fouled. It looks like they're going to get Zachary Davis for that one. And Lamont Parrish just no, was living on Beat. that sideline, Clay. And, and, and his reasoning, obviously, 19 of 22 from the free throw line. He's upset because he feels like that if they didn't foul Texas A&M, this would be a much bigger lead. Actually, on B.J. Mack, so that's his fourth. Murray Boyle's also playing with four for South Carolina. And Garcia has four for Texas A&M. South Carolina, one timeout remaining. Texas A&M has a couple remaining. Jace Carter back on the floor for Texas A&M. He had a solid game at Tennessee on Saturday. Been pretty quiet here tonight. Four points, all of them at the line. Well, right now, you've got to get hot defensively. You need consecutive stops for the rest of this game. If you're the Texas A&M Aggies. For the Gamecocks, you want to play your game. Be poised. Right now, I look for them to try to go inside. V.J. Max got a size advantage over Radford. They switched that back with Solomon Washington. Nice job by the Aggies. And the Gamecocks again take that shot clock down. And another chance at a three-point opportunity. How many times have we seen Michi Johnson just explode with a straight-line drive? And that's on the Aggies because, yeah, they're, they're doing a lot of switching. They're communicating. They're playing some zone, some man. But regardless of the defense that you're playing, you have to keep the basketball in front of you. The dribble drive, one of the most devastating moves in college basketball. Solo Washington picked up that foul. And I think they called a lane violation on Texas A&M. So Davis is going to get another foul shot. Big break for Carolina. Texas A&M came back from 13 down in the second half and with just over six minutes to go, actually had a three-point lead for a while. And now South Carolina has regained control here late, 2.03 to go. And let's remind our viewers, these are two teams that have both knocked off the likes of a Tennessee top five team. Kentucky, who's playing as good as anyone in the country right now, put up 117 points versus Alabama. A huge win last night in Starkville, Mississippi on the road. They had to put one more second back on the clock. That's what that delay was about. Davis didn't get it. Obasaki. There's Boots Radford. Floats it up. That was partially blocked. Radford gets it back. Throws up a wild shot and got it to fall. All heart by Tyrese Boots Radford. Not giving up as all Buzz with Williams teams are. 19 points, 9 rebounds for Boots. Michi Johnson is fouled again. 
And that's on Taylor. Tyrese Boots Radford does a nice job of trying to get in, but it's really good defense. But he doesn't quit on the play. Look at him. Back up over the taller, stronger B.J. Mack. Tyrese Radford continuing to exemplify what you see in all Buzz Williams teams, an unwillingness to quit in any game that they play. It's Radford three years at Virginia Tech, three here at Texas A&M. As Johnson goes to the line for South Carolina, man, they're missing their foul shots here lately. It stays a five-point game, and Buzz Williams wants a timeout. Love the timeout by Coach Buzz Williams. I tell all coaches, you can't take them home with you. And right now, he really to start the lead, and so they're coming in here with that chip on their shoulder, continuing to try to prove all doubters wrong. This is their third game against a ranked opponent this year at home for Texas A&M, and they beat Kentucky and Tennessee here. Can they do it against South Carolina? Obasaki scores and gets fouled. What a finish. The inability to make a Buzz Williams team quit. Now, Colin Murray Balls feels like he had his hands straight up. Boy, that's a and, tough and foul. And I'm not sure he didn't. And that's the fifth on Murray Boyles, so his night is over. He did a nice job, Colin Murray Boyles, of not fouling. And that was a tough break against the young freshman here on the road at Reed Arena as well. You can see that he's saying, I, I thought I had great defensive position, and I, I, I tend to agree with him. Obasaki well, completes the three-point play. And it's back to a two-point game. We look at the, the wire. 12 games being tied or within one possession. They're about 50-50 in those games with four minutes left. None bigger than this one right here to try to get back in Joe Lenardi's good graces. Triple double watch for Talon Cooper. 11 points, nine assists, eight rebounds. Cooper, under a minute to go. Meet you Johnson time. It is Johnson. Cooper for three. Missed it. Long rebound out for Johnson. Against the best rebounding team basically in this league. And they're going to call a jump ball on the sideline. It's going to stay with South Carolina. The key now is that if you're the Texas A&M Aggies, you do not have to foul. Now, you do have to box out if you want an opportunity to win this basketball game. What a nice job of the Gamecocks anticipating the miss and attacking the glass. Shot clock at 10. 38 seconds to play in regulation. Michi Johnson going to work. Extra pass. Shot fake. Mack missed it. Out of bounds to South Carolina. And now the officials will probably take a look at it. Under two minutes. Such an important call. Most of the time they're right. And this is really a free timeout for both of these coaches. Uh, with that being said, what Coach Buzz Williams is going to be talking to his team about, if the Gamecocks receive the basketball, as our great officiating crew reviews this, he's going to decide who and when they want to foul. Uh, if they have the basketball back, let's remember, it will be 20 seconds because it was on the offensive glass, so there wasn't a change of possession. With that being said, if it's 20 seconds, you don't want to allow this game to get down too low. So he's saying, these are the guys that we want to foul if we have to foul. I think they're going to try to trap the basketball and see if they can get a steal before having to foul. On the other side, Clay, for the Gamecocks, you want to be strong with that basketball. And I wouldn't be surprised if Lamont Paris holds this basketball. He knows the clock is his ally. You're up two on the road. But I see some type of play with the basketball ending up in the hands of Michi Johnson, Talon Cooper, or B.J. Mack. That's their trifecta, their three-headed monster that's been so successful. 
They adjusted the clock to 27.2 left. Let's take another look. And I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to the corner if the Aggies don't try to trap that first pass. So 20 seconds on the shot clock, 27 seconds in the game. And a foul and a collision here with the official. Chase Carter into the official. Not surprised that the Aggies waited a little bit. I actually think they played that perfectly. They attempted to get, you know, a steal. They didn't want to have to foul, but once the shot clock started to get down, they left themselves close to 17 seconds. Cooper, a really good free throw shooter. Career 67%, 75% this season. But South Carolina has not been good at the line fish tonight. They're 6 of 12. Yeah, only 50% on tonight. And these are crucial. Obviously, the first one, if he can make that's the biggest one. And then the second one would make it a two-possession game. Cooper doesn't hit. Down to Texas A&M. Taylor got it. Eight seconds. Michi Johnson attacks. Good pass. Yes. Davis. And a timeout called by Buzz Williams with three seconds left. What a pass to Zachary Davis. Beautiful. And you could see in that play, Lamont Paris was not going to call a timeout. After the score, he, even though South Carolina likes to play at a slower place at times, he was on the sideline waving his hands, telling Michi Johnson to push it. And it was a nice job of not allowing the defense to set up. You see that was the third line of defense. Henry Coleman tried to get back, was there too little, too late. And I like Buzz Williams calling a timeout here because with three seconds, what you probably would have had is Wade Taylor or Boots Radford coming down and throwing up a heave. He didn't want to allow that to happen. Now, the Gamecocks do have an opportunity to set up their defense, but at least if you're Buzz Williams, you have a play here and you get a chance to get something going towards the basket where you could potentially get fouled or get you a quality look at the basket. So Texas A&M has a couple of players who have really been good here in the second half. Radford and Taylor in particular. Who do you want taking that shot? Well, I think this it goes to the preseason SEC player of the year in, in Wade Taylor. He just made a basket going to the rim. Three seconds is a long time. It's 3.1 seconds. That's an eternity in the game of basketball. The key is for whoever gets the basketball to get it heading towards the Aggies basket versus going away from the basket so that he can catch it on the pass going towards the rim and if you're South Carolina you do not want to foul both teams in the bonus the Aggies actually in the double bonus well Taylor's going to trigger the inbound so my guess is he'll get it right back throws it to Radford and now Oh, wow. Unbelievable. You talk about a turnover on the sideline, and Buzz Williams can't believe it. He cannot believe it because oh, now the Gamecocks are ready for the play. They know exactly what they're going to do. The element of surprise is gone. And now South Carolina is able to make the adjustments. Wow. So they started the clock early. That's why they stopped it. Taylor lost it. Unbelievable. And that's going to do it. So this game ends in a thud for Texas A&M, and they lose their fifth straight. South Carolina is going to get out of Reed Arena.
with a 70 to 68 win, their sixth SEC road win. Second most all time after that 96 90.